Alrighty, fellas. Good morning, good morning. How are we doing today? I had a banger breakfast, one that I've got to brag about. Two cherry Pop-Tarts and an 8-ounce glass of chocolate milk. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well in life. How are you guys? What's up? What's up? Today, plans are... <laughs> what's up? Sorry. Uh, shiny hunting. Plans are shiny hunting. That's pretty much it. Maybe making some breeds. Nothing exciting. Literally nothing cool today. Sorry, guys. Sorry to tell you now. That's how it is. Thus is the case. Um, I, I don't plan on doing my gym rerun today. I kind of need a break, but who knows, man. After maybe an hour, maybe a couple more sips of caffeine, maybe I'll feel up to it. But those gym runs are pretty intense, so we'll see what happens. Holy shit, you are rich. I ended yesterday's stream at what? 10 mil Pokeyen, which is I mean, it's, it's a solid amount of cash. It's fine to have in pure cash. Um, I spent like a bunch. I've been spending a bunch on breeds and prepping breeds for a pretty big breeding extravaganza. I don't know what the like total i'm really excited to see what the total like value of all the breeds will be all the total value of well, that'd be pretty crazy um i might end up doing that hilariously as my 50,000 subscribers special which is cute because i looked back and i realized all the other times i've done breeding extravaganzas was for my 1,000 subscriber special was for my like i think i did like a 5,000 sub special and then a 25,000 sub special all of those were breeding extravaganza so i think doing a another one bringing back that series doing a fourth breeding extravaganza for um for 50k i think it's kind of neat what would be the easiest way to shun for excadrill unfortunately i don't think there is an easy way to hunt excadrill i think excadrill is, is an egg hunt i think it's a rare hunt man it's a really beautiful shiny really under hunted because the only way yeah the only way drill birds and extra drills come into the game is via swarms and phenos swarms and phenos so if you want to shiny hunt one it's an egg hunt and i have a rare hunting guide that should cover that strategy uh is my single encounter pucciana from petal bird woods not really that cool since mighty and has a times five horde i still think it's pretty cool i think it's i think it's important to remember and talk about how you got a shiny i mean obviously it's a little frustrating to some extent but it's, i think it's still cool it's still a times five horde shiny gotten via a single encounter method is how i would kind of qualify that i know it's very complicated kind of who really cares at that point but i don't know i think it's kind of important uh hey, Pichos, i just won the venipede catching event dude congratulations congratulations moderator said that prize will be delivered within a week does it happen to the mail yes it happened to the mail dude congratulations man not many people can say they've won a catch event in pokemon it's a seriously seriously really really cool thing um, I'm lucky enough to say that I've won two over my 10 years of playing them and, you know, took a long time to win one. They're super fun. Catch events are awesome. I recommend them. I feel like I haven't really been highlighting them in a lot of my content recently, but catch events are usually a really good way to like make Pokeyen as well as having a chance at an overarching goal, like either a competitive shiny or just a six times 31 Pokemon. Catch events are fantastic. Keep an eye on them. Yeah, I, I will say, dude, breeding for profit is probably one of the best things you can do right now. Um, it's not a, it's really important to understand when the game is in a catching market versus a breeding market. And it really comes down to just really basic, like supply and demand. If there's a lot of good IV Pokemon, one of the best ways to check is dittos. If, di if good IV dittos are cheap, it's probably a breeder's market, which means you want to go breed things for profit. When one times 31 attack dittos are 5k, when one times 31 speed dittos are 7k, like these can get like 10 to 12k during catching markets, right? Um, if markets are like this, you just go breed for profit. It's it's really that simple. And if markets are the opposite, where it's 10 to 12K per ditto, you go catch for profit. And understanding which kind of market we're in is super important for any type of player to understand how to make money. How do I, like, this is so cheap. How do I adjust your strategies, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, like, what is this ditto? Like, this ditto is so good. 25 plus speed, 25 plus defense, 20 plus attack. Like, you just breed special defense on this. It's 5K ditto. And bam, bam, you got a, you know, competitive Pokemon. Yeah, everybody's preparing for raids right now. So, it, like, does good IV Pokemon, good IV of, of the correct species, things like good IV Sableyes, things like good IV Murkrows, things like good IV Tyranitars, Metagrosses, Reuniclises, all these Pokemon that were really good during raids, getting these right now and breeding them up is really smart, really important. Um, breed up good IVs on Pokemon that are desired right now. Understanding what Pokemon desired is super important. I have a video I was just talking about. If you Google um, best Pokemon in Pokemon to breed for profit, that video is foolproof because the whole point of that video is like 
teaching you how to identify what Pokemon are good for profit. And it goes through a couple different examples. Uh, at the time, like Glade was getting buffed in PvP. So it talked about, hey, like Glade, this is a good example. Keep tabs of PvP changes. If you're, I don't care what type of player you are, if you're a PvM, PvP, Shiny Hunter, whatever, you actually, everybody, every type of player should keep track of balancing changes, especially PvP changes, because if you need to make money, which every single type of player needs to make Poke in, every player needs to make money, right? Doesn't matter if you're a Shadow Hunter, PvP, or whatever, right? Understanding what PvP Pokemon are turbo desired or extra desired because, you know, they're getting buffed or nerfed or whatever is super important. If delayed sharpness ability gets buffed back up to 1.5 times, oh, wow, that demand for that Pokemon is, is pretty high right now. Let's go, you know, people want it for to, you know, stomp through OU. Let me go breed it. Being able to identify that is super, super important. Um, I see, I've seen a lot of people who just kind of like are doing strategies from like old times. They come back to the game and they're doing old time strategies and you've got to constantly, Pokemo is all about adapting and changing and adjusting to the market and making your play around that and having multiple different uh, money makers that work like that. Pat, let's talk about food, breakfast burrito thoughts. This is the coldest food take I will ever drop. Um, breakfast burritos are fucking phenomenal. They're like S tier, S tier, S tier, probably the best breakfast food. Um, just incredible, man. Like house potatoes and like queso and like diced ham and bake oh, in a breakfast burrito or like, uh, any sort of steak. Um, I really like like pulled pork in a breakfast burrito is phenomenal. Um, breakfast burritos are just incredible. Someone said overrated <laughs> ban that person. No, I'm just kidding. Dude, breakfast burritos are just undeniably incredible. Uh, yesterday, playing Pokemo, I went from 46,000 encounters at the start of the day to 61,000 encounters by the end of the day. Is that a good number for time swipe hordes? Or maybe I can do something to increase the number around 10 hours played. Let's check. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, what is that? 61 minus 46? You got 15,000 encounters in 10 hours played? That seems unreal. That seems like impossible. Um, was it was it closer to like eleven hours played, maybe, or like ten and a, even like ten and a half? I know that's like you're close. Like maybe yeah, okay, maybe maybe eleven or twelve hours. You're doing really good. Um, I assume is that is that with Lepa's J Kufu? That's an extremely good rate. That's an extremely good rate. If you're playing 11, 12 hours a day and getting yeah, one more fuck is impossible. Yeah. Um, Oh, Wooper near a PC. That's really, yeah, to be fair, that's really close. Um, even then, that's, you're probably getting like 12 to 1300 encounters per hour consistently for 11, 12 hours. That's like about the peak, man. Most people, like myself included, you'll average like a thousand encounters, you know, per hour. Cause like doing time swap forwards. Uh, with Lepas, it can get a little bit higher, but like you just, as with human error, you know, restroom breaks, you know, distracted by a YouTube video, whatever, you just, if you're if you're watching right now, go go click that sweet then button. Um, you're just your your rate's gonna go down. You don't stay at a, as a human. You don't stay at a perfect rate for that long of a time generally. Um, that's a really really impressive rate in my opinion, Jay Kufu. This is actually a really good question. I've never even thought about this, Storm. Only works on pickup. That's what I would assume as well. But I don't. Maybe it reads differently. I don't know. He's so. It's only. I have to get confirmation from like a dev or something. Graystorm said, I really liked your amulet coin video, but you forgot to mention an item charm boosting the amount of amulets you get. If item magnet charm actually affected the amount of like amulet coins wild meowths could have, that'd be a really, really big deal. I've never even thought about, I've never heard anybody using this. I've never even thought about that. It's unlikely that it's unlikely that it works that way because it's pretty un uh, rare in life where like someone's never thought of something before. It's usually thought of and tested. There's just so many people, right? Uh, but someone's got to be the first, so... A charm which increases the chance to find an item from wild encounters. I don't know if this is only from pickup. It doesn't really read like that. I'd have to ask. I'm not sure. That would be like really, really interesting. Um, I tried yesterday and it does not work. Maybe I'll have to do a test. I'll also sacrifice an item magnet charm and do a test or just ask a dev. That's super interesting. That's super interesting. I watched one of your payday videos and I noticed something that confuses me. If your payday Meowth is holding an item, does it still pick up the item and put it in your bag? Yes. It, so it used to not work like that in Pokemon. And I think it doesn't work like that in traditional Pokemon. But nowadays, in current day Pokemon, if your Meowth has a choice band, for example, it will still pick up the items and it will just go directly into your bag. That's a great question for clarification.
Is Shiny Arceus real in Pokemon? From my understanding, I don't believe you can get the King of the Hill style legendaries as shinies. I could be wrong, but that's my understanding. Uh, do you think someone is shiny hunting Tentacruel right now? Dude, yeah, why not? Tenac it's a good looking shiny. It gets memed on. Uh, I think Tentacool especially is a really good looking shiny. It's just very common. Like, the reason why Tentacool is memed on as a shiny is it's hyper common because it's one of the best XP training spots in the game. Uh, specifically, it's like the best XP training spot prior to Mount Silver. Um, but like Tentacool, like that emerald green on Tentacool's, you know, little bulbous head, I think it's kind of cool. I think it actually, like, this green's less good, but still pretty cool. I think it's a cool shiny, but it's so common that it's not as interesting. I think the same thing happens with, like, Rapidash. Like, Rapidash is a very cool shiny, but when you see it over and over again so much, it just... Even, like, Ponyta nowadays. Like, Ponyta was one of the coolest shinies back in early days of Pokemon, and it's still pretty cool, but it's not nearly as cool as it used to be because you just... It's so common. It's so oftenly seen, and your brain just gets used to it, you know? Rarity definitely affects cool factor, in my opinion, in, in Pokemon for a shiny. Uh, why do you use Spinarak? It has the swarm ability, which increases the amount of encounters you'll get by like 10%. And every little bit helps. Articuno currently with a 41% win rate in UU. <laughs> Based legendary. Let's check out. Oh man. Just bring just bring him to NU, bro. How's he doing? 0.33%? Wait. Is a 30%, but it's how's how's he in NU? Oh, in NU, he has a 41% win rate. Holy shit. Assault gear is kind of cool. I love the idea of the idea of assault gear. I mean, kind of. So what's like the best? Would you just end up go would you go bold? It, would you go bold 252 HP, 252 defense, and then assault gear, Articuno? Or do you have to go rocky home with some chip? Or like some I, I don't know what you do here, man. This Pokemon is struggling. I know he's recently, ever, in VGC, he's actually recently been popping off, which is interesting. You do have, um, I feel like Arcuno could work. It's so tanky. We have the hail buff in Pokemon as well. So it gets 1.5 times defense in hail. I feel like you actually might be able to, I feel like those stats, obviously Articuno is like one of the worst legendaries, but I feel like it actually really could be good in Enyu. I, I don't know if these stats tell the whole story. I feel like people need to learn how to play with it. Um, I actually think this could become really good. Not really good, but like, I think Articuno could become like 5 to 6% usage with like 49 to 51% win rate. The problem is Stealth Rocks? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, and is it worth... The shitty thing is, how do you clear Stealth Rocks to be able to bring in a tank? That's like a huge problem is like, if you have to support your tank being brought in, that's a huge problem. That's not good. <laughs> like your tank is supposed to be the one to be able to switch in and have that support and set up like a rapid spin or something. Yeah, that's really, this with like heavy duty boots would be huge. Yeah, maybe it's gonna be better in doubles. I kind of doubt it, but we'll, we'll check stats and see how if it's being played at all. I would love to learn, learn, learn. Yeah, wow. I would love to learn doubles in, um, yeah, Articuno trying to default. Yeah, it's, yeah. I would love to learn doubles in Pokemon. Doubles is such an interesting format, dude. 58% win, win rate Metagross. Jeez Louise, dude. This is... So these stats on doubles are pretty insane, though. I feel like doubles is one of the... From the outside looking in, it looks like one of the least balanced formats. Maybe it's just because, like, there's a really big skill gap between the best and the worst, and a lot of people just feed. Like, I feel like in doubles, you see some of the highest win rates and then some of the lowest. Like... I don't know, it's pretty brutal. Versus like Zapdos at 59%. Over 5,000, you know, 5,000 games. That's not a small amount of games. Like, damn, that's crazy. Hashtag bring Little Cup back. Yeah, for those who don't know, Little Cup was actually a supported, fully automated Pokemon PvP format that was ran for a while, but there was just not enough players and it just kind of, the support kind of died off. There are still like community and even official Little Cup tournaments here and there held on the forums, but you can't just queue up for a Little Cup game anymore. Um, it'd be kind of fun. I mean, I prefer RU slash PU being added, but I, I'd play Little Cup. I would do some videos covering it if it came out. I could be mistaken, but I feel like Little Cup is also just kind of a balancing nightmare. I feel like it's so... I feel like it's so hard. It's, you have to think about so many other things that would normally never matter, you know? I feel like it's a balancing nightmare. Uh, why are Mysterious Premier Balls uh, more than Ultra Balls? Aren't the Ultra Balls better? So the Ultra Balls have a lower shiny rate, right? Let's go over it. 
Um, holy shit, Ultra Balls are almost 100k. That's wild. Uh, Premier Balls, so Ultra Balls have a shiny rate of 1 out of 2,500. Premier Balls, though, have a 1 out of 4k, but give alphas. So they give you a, a possible chance at a Shalfa, which is insane. Um, that's why Premier Balls are more expensive, because Shalfas are really, really, really rare uh, and really, really touted as, like, incredible. Dude, okay, I'm not going to lie. I've been the, like the guy saying that mysterious balls are gonna go up. I didn't expect them to go up this fast. Ultras and premieres, ultras being 100k, premieres already being at 340, 350. That's insane, actually. Wow. Great balls and pokers haven't moved too much in a, in a little bit, which I mean they're slowly. It makes sense. There's a little bit more supply. That's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, I feel like great balls are kind of the best. I, most of my money is in mysterious great balls. I have a spread, but like. I think most of my money's in great balls and premieres. Um, I think great balls are like at that one out of four K rate for that price. I feel like it's the best value. I agree. Um, they're all just so crazy though. Lucky Reds fly to the moon, dude. What I haven't checked Lucky Reds and Temporal Cape. I haven't checked in a sec. What are the recent Lucky Reds at one sixty two K? What about Temporal Cape? Forty two mil. Wowzers. How's um? Lucky Red and Lucky Gold Dragon doing. Lucky Red's at 7 mil. Lucky Gold F5. Okay, so this is still at this is still at base price. This one's still at base price, which is interesting. This is like what it costs during the event. Lucky Red has gone up a bit. We'll see if that how much supply is there though? Like uh, dude, I think this will fall a little bit. Don't don't take don't make financial moves off of that decision, but like I feel like people are panicking still a little bit. Look at this supply. Oh my, for one vanity, for a like, supposed to be a quote unquote rare. 128 listings is crazy. Green unity cape. Dude, these were a vanity that nobody expected to, nobody cared about. And these are insane. If you bought these a year ago, this is one of the big, this, it's actually crazy. This is one of the most insane ROI investments, return on investment, investment, nice. Um, it's one of the craziest returns ever. These were what, four mil during the event? Like, let's do the math. If you happen to buy four of these, let's say five, let's say for whatever reason, no, let's say four, let's say you bought two of each. Is it green unity and like red? What's the other unity? Red unity. Let's keep it simple, okay? Let's say you bought Nah, let's do two of each. Let's say you bought two red unity capes for eight mil a piece, right? Or for four mil a piece. That's eight mil. So you paid 16 mil. If you bought two of each, you paid 16 mil. If you bought two of each of these one year ago, you paid 16 mil. Now they are worth 37.5 times two plus. 120 mil what the fuck? if you paid 16 mil one year ago that turned into 195 mil and people think that investing is dead people have been complaining on the markets on the forums yada yada etc it is very much alive you just have to make the right decision the right calls and it's risky and it's difficult and it's hard and not everybody can be a winner that is insane. That is one of the, that is, I think the craziest investment in the shortest amount of time that I've ever seen. That is so wild. Um, back when like golden dragon mask went from like four mil to 30 mil in a year, that was insane. Let alone four mil to 60 mil in a year. That is unbelievable. Are we egg shunting question mark? Uh, kind of, we're setting up breeds. You want to know something really funny? You want to see what I bought today, Twitch chat? Like five Sunfloras. I, okay, I really like Sunflora. I, you know what? I know cringe hipster Petrowski strikes again. Weak Pokemon. But like, unironically, solar power, like hidden ability access? Um, wait, is solar power not even his hidden ability? Okay, who cares? But solar power Sunflora can actually kind of go hard. Solar power Sunflora in sun, like hitting off solar beams, can actually kind of hit like a truck. Specifically, Sunflora in, um, and like randoms is really good. Is it that good in NU? 
Probably not. But I bought five of them. So let's go ahead and set up some breeds. All right, so in Flora number one, this one is Timid Nature. Look at him dance. How can you not like some Flora? This one's Timid Nature. So I do want to keep that. I do want to go ahead and put an Everstone on this immediately and then find a breeder with similar stats. I don't even know if I need to breed. I probably should just flip this, but I kind of want to breed it for fun. I want to breed it into a male. That'll make me be able to sell it for a lot more Pokeyen. Either put higher HP or 31 special attack on it if possible here. Egg moves question mark. Dude, I've been a noob recently. I have not been checking every Pokemon to see if it needs egg moves. I don't think this one does. It could get Morning Sun, but it's not really that relevant, honestly. You're kind of just doing damage to let it die. But like, maybe? Um, honestly, it might be worth, but it's a good call. But yeah, always check. If you're breeding a Pokemon, always check if it needs egg moves. It's actually so, so, so important. If we can just casually breed it on, I might go for that, but we'll see. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I never thought I'd see the day where like alphas are kind of getting expensive. For a while, like, alphas were actually hurting the economy, in my opinion, and, like, bringing prices of, like, 2 times 31 and stuff down. But, like, if I'm looking for a 3 times 31 plant egg group with 20 plus no sets, it's it's 165k, which is pretty fair. And But, like, if I need it in timid, if I need a timid with these stats, there's nothing? We're so, like, swamped on the market, like, there's not even many options? We do this? 140k? 200k like that's it's pretty solid the market's kind of been really healthy recently regarding alphas it's really cool to see in my opinion i might just flip this sunflora instead of breeding it hilariously this was i so there was a sunflora alpha swarm recently and i just bought a bunch of them to breed because i knew that i liked sunflora so dude whenever if you want to stock up on a certain alpha it is so smart to do it after like a specific alpha 3k ditto sure um it's so good it's actually so stupid good to just stock up on um I'm so distracted today. It's so good to stock up on alphas after an alpha swarm for field for just certain egg groups or for uh, for whatever it may be. Like I like sunflora. I might want to go for a, a shalfa sunflora at some point, kind of slowly and passively. So I picked up some sunfloras after a sunflora alpha. It's that is that simple. Uh, they're just way 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 cheaper after that swarm. Okay, apparently this is a viewer of mine. Do you have shiny? That is insane. Apparently this is a viewer of mine who has gotten three shinies today. He got himself a shiny Magikarp. He's been hunting here for like weeks. And he got himself a shiny Magikarp at 57,000, 55,000 encounters. First to start the day. And then 1,000 encounters later, got himself his fourth, I believe, shiny Magikarp in total. And then, I don't know how many encounters this is, 1,000 or 2,000 later, his fifth shiny at Dragon's Den, completing the full rotation, getting four carps in one shiny Dratini. He finally got himself his shiny Dratini. Congratulations, dude. That is... I, I don't normally show up to all my viewer shinies like this, but this is very, very, very cool. 700 encounters later. That is crazy. That is crazy. How many total encounters did you do at Dragon's Den? Like, obviously it took you four Magikarps to get the one, which is on average or whatever, but like, your encounters, you actually got really lucky, even though it may not feel like it because it's just tough. It's a tough shunt. This is a tough shunt. Um... I swear he got carp like 30 minutes ago. Yeah, this guy, he did. He this is the yeah he this guy got a shiny carp like 30 minutes ago. Um, he's gotten three shinies today, two magic carps and a Dratini. and he finally he finally finished off this spot. This is a really really cool like chapter for him, and, and I just want to say congratulations to you, dude. I like seeing stuff like that. Congrats on the Dratini, man. It's I'm glad to see that chapter of your shunting done with, dude. Congratulations. This, this is unironically one of my favorite parts of, of shiny hunting, especially like on stream and in a community. Like I've, I'm really invested in, and I've been really following his, like this guy's proven act, his journey on this shunt. He comes in every day. He says, Hey man, I'm shutting, you know, what's up? Good morning. How are you doing? Good luck on your shunt. You know, I'm shutting Dratini. I've been here for a few weeks. Today I'm at 33k encounters, yada yada. Like I like that. It's 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 so motivating to everybody. You follow their journeys. You get invested in people's stories, invested in people's journeys, and you are rooting for everybody else to succeed. And they're rooting for you. Like shiny hunting is it's like it's really wholesome. Like shiny hunting is one of the most wholesome communities because everybody just wants just wants everybody else to get lucky. Everybody just from what I see usually, what I try to preach at least as well. Everybody just wants everybody else to like get shinies and succeed. We know what it's like to go dry, so we don't want to see people go dry. I, I always wish like the best of luck. Um, that's so cool, man. Congratulations. These are all caught in one day, I think. That is, look at this. Look at this. 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 1.52 p.m. 
Oh, ah, nice work, dude. Nice work. 31 speed. That's very cool, man. I miss times five hordes, man. I want to get some rapid shinies, dude. That's a good feeling, dude. Congrats, man. Something I could do, I could actually just let this Sunflora not be alpha. Just let it fall through. And that's okay. Because I paid, so I paid 25k for this, I'm pretty sure. Yes, I paid either like, I think it was 28k to be fair for the timid one. I paid 28k, 25k, 25k, 20k, 18k. All these Sunflora's are hyper cheap. Um, It might actually be better if I just get a non-alpha breeder for the Sunflora. If I do this, it's 132k for the alpha. I might do this. I keep my alpha chance. I get an HP stat on it. Both of the special attack and the special defense stay super high. Now, I probably want to breed this as a male, just so I can sell it as a breeder if I want to. But this looks pretty beautiful. Timid nature. 31 HP. 31 defense. 31 speed. 25 plus in both of these if this medium rolls or more. Did I need to do that breed? Did my son Flora really need those extra stats? Absolutely not. But it's fun. Let's add that to our breeding extravaganza pile. I did some setups off stream. I have a lot of insane Beldums here. I'm not going to lie. I think I made some ridiculous profits on these Beldum breeds. I bought most of these Beldums for like 25k or less. And look at this. Like that was 25, 20 to 25k or less. And this like did it. Like I think a lot of these breeds are going to be insane. A lot of these Beldums. A lot of these Beldums were super good. Adamant nature. A lot of these Beldums are going to come out super nice. All right, next Sunflora, boys. We've got tons of Sword Flood Flora. A lot of these have natures as well. Like, this is modest nature. So, like, all I'm going to do is Everstone this and try to put a uh, 31 HP or, like, high roll the HP, probably. Yeah, I feel like if I'm going to go for for nature, I might as well just breed the extra 31 on it. So, I'm going to I'm gonna shell out. Dude, I'm going to have so much Pokeyen in breeders in this box. Like, every breed is, like... 100 plus k of value this is gonna be one of the biggest breeding extravaganzas dude we'll put an hp brace on the roselia go see how this looks beautiful breed coming out three times 31 two times 20 plus even 20 plus attack modest nature i have to try to make that male all right next third sun flora uh no oh there is nature this time so nature two times 31 in defense but defense we could just make this physical as well and disregard the nature, but I feel like the nature is worthwhile. You can just roll up the speed and then go for a 31 special attack. What I would do here, <laughs> these are so expensive. Plants, male, 20 plus here. I would try to roll, oh my God, this is gonna be so expensive. Actually, that's not bad. Actually, that's no, not alpha. 108K though. That's not bad at all. Show me the 108. Oh no, GTL. Oh no down that's not bad look at that that's probably a uh i'm gonna buy that that's a cheap breeder from that sunflora swarm that i was talking about that is perfect we'll go ahead and snipe that up we'll go ahead and everstone everstone the female sunflora which is this one we'll put a special attack brace on this one I don't think that these breeds are going to yield that much profit. They might yield some profit, but like, I don't think these are that much profitable breeds. If anything, they'll mostly just break even and give me that shelf a chance, which in a breeding extravaganza, I'm not looking for every breed to be like so incredible. It's more like just trying to set up as many solid breeds as possible and have that overarching chance at making some profit, making some value, and one day getting just a really good IV, you know, shiny Pokemon on accident. All right, for this, we're going to breed up the stats and then hope for a nature roll along the way. We're going to go ahead and buy, I think, this breeder. The Sunflora. Wait, no, no, no. I'm doing something wrong here. Why does this have... Oh, no, no, no. This is fine. It's 31 attack, but the attacks are relevant. So I'm just... I just have an extra chance to roll the attack IV. That's fine. Um, That's kind of funny. Buying 3 times 31 for that price. Is this Tim in nature as well? What is this Sunflora? Wait, What? Okay, maybe it is worth to just... This is a crazy Sunflora. Uh, what I actually could hear, do here then is... This is, the f this is the peak gamble breed, okay? The peak gamble breed. We Everstone, and then we get a special attack brace for this one. And then we just randomly try to see if it rolls 31 defense or 31 attack. This is the peak gamble breed, fellas. 
This could be crazy. I mean, it already is pretty crazy. That's awesome. That was a really good buy for that breeder. All right, the last Sunflora breed, fellas. We doing a little, adding a couple to the extravaganza every day. Once again, look at all these Sunflora breeders, man. When an, when an alpha swarm happens, take advantage. Flip all those breeders and such. I'm kind of doing the opposite where I'm like, just buying breeders and, or breeding breeding the females up with, with the males, but you could also just do a bunch of, instead, instead of breeding at all, you could just flip a bunch of the male breeders. Uh, neither of these natures is that good. Mild and rash, they're fine, but they're not like super good. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a brace. Put on Thank you this. All right, here's what this breed's looking like. Uh, no nature selected. 231's guaranteed, or 331's guaranteed. Looking pretty solid. Bam, bam, there you go. Uh, isn't some Flora 40 base speed? Yes, and because of that, you... Hilariously, even though it's 40 base, or 30 base stat speed, you still need high speed on some Flora for a couple of reasons, because you might want to go up... Firstly, you might want to go a chlorophyll build. Um, and then secondly... There's just still certain Pokemon you like out like you often go 252 speed on Sunflora even though it's so slow because you're also not that tanky <laughs> so like you're not really living any attacks either it's just a bad Pokemon okay like your your best use of it is like trying to be as fast as possible using solar power trying to get them to like switch as well as super good if you switch against Sunflora you will actually take insane damage um like those you know solar beams with solar power are no joke you can actually do some pretty crazy damage so that's what you're going for but obviously some floor is not great but the speed is relevant hilariously even though it's very very slow you're not really seeing too many trick rooms on floors at least from what i've seen but i would love to see that more i guess we set up five some floor breeds today we're on we're one breed away from having the first breeding extravaganza box totally full however how many do i have any more empty boxes i don't no, no, I do. Okay. That's good for me. I have at least two. Yes, that's actually perfect. I want to do... I want this bringing extravaganza to be one of the biggest I've ever done. So I really want to do, like, I think two to three full boxes is my goal of Pokemon to breed. I don't know if I'll be able to stick to that. At least two. At least two. Maybe I'll push three. We'll have to see. Alrighty, back to running back and forth in grass. What I do best. Are red Oni Mast actually up to 540k a piece? Holy shit. That's super good for me. Who said investing's dead? I mean, it's not that crazy. I think I bought most of mine for like 300 to 400k, somewhere in that range. I guess this was three years ago. Huh. Dude, time has passed so quickly. How many red only masks? Do I don't have that many red only masks, but I have a couple. I have, I have five. Okay, you know, like I have five and I probably made around 100 and 150k profit each. I would say, if I sold them now, so 300k, 450, five, math, oh my god, 600, like 750k or so, I believe, math, um, profit on those, just for those sitting there chilling, it's not, a, it's not, it's over three years, it's nothing crazy, honestly, it's honestly not that great, but like, I don't know, it's, it's nice, like, I'm a huge fan of just putting my money into stuff in Pokemo and just... You know, quote unquote investing, pumping a bunch of my Poke in. It's why my cash stack is always so small. Pumping my yen into stuff and then just hoping it does well is honestly a pretty flawless, to some extent. Obviously, the right stuff, vanities and such, and old stuff. Did you forget to pop the shiny charm that was donated to you? Yes, I absolutely did. Who wants it on charm? Let me ask team chat. Top things, Koban, big Koban capitalists don't want you to know. True. I am actually a big Koban capitalist. That is true. Uh, they're worth like people do people buy up this item so much they're like 68k a piece and i have like 77 of them or <laughs> something ridiculous <laughs> uh we are we are manipulating code i'm not really but like it's i just a vanity when it came out i was like oh i just like this man. i'm gonna buy it. it was like they were like tw these were 20k a pop eight i bought all mine for like 18 20k a pop um just stupid amounts of kobons dude i like i like buying big amounts of dumb vanities i also have a shit ton of bunny tails not as many kobons but like 44 bunny tails i think is the math how much are bunny tails and they're all like i bought them all for 18 20k a piece i haven't made much on bunny tails but like i i'd like them you know i this I don't make money on all my investments or that much. I just, I don't know. I just like them. I buy stuff because I like it. That's really it. If I make money on it, that's cool. All right, Blitz Pop Charm. Wish me luck, fellas. This was donated by Tino, so I do appreciate that, dude. Hopefully, that'll give the the believers in the Twitch reward point system some hope. 
I'm huge into the worm worm. I really want to get more into the worm worm. And you know what? How many do I have? Only two? How much are they? Chat, don't go buy them out. Okay, chill. Fuck it. I'll buy a couple. It's a good item. It's a great vanity in my opinion. How many was that? Seven, that was 20 or something. We'll buy to like 25. No, 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 we'll stop there. That puts me at, that'll be 25 if you count the two in my bag. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the lore glitch is when it doesn't pop the next lore. When you get into, if you get into an, an encounter, a wild encounter, like at the last step of the lore, it won't repop the next one. And it's like an extremely common occurrence. And what happens is you have to notice it and remember to pop your lore afterwards or else you'll like, you know, mess up your hunt. Um, I really hope they fix that at some point. It's a very, very common, really, really, really annoying glitch. I'd rather it so you just like can't get an encounter on that last step. Like that, like I'd rather waste one lore step or whatever, every lore than have to deal with that because it just makes it way less AFK to just run back and forth in single encounter. It's, it's really, really, it's kind of crazy how often it happens, like multiple times per hour, like probably five times. It's ridiculous. Uh, so Pat, for the shiny contest in, in a week or so, what's the criterion for grading the shiny entries? What wins over something else? Time and effort and love and energy. All of those factors are what like tip the scale and make the scale. Um, for those who have never been to a shiny rating before, I'm not going to lie, the scale is extremely harsh. It's like the it's like the polar opposite of the fashion contest. The fashion contest, the average score is probably like a 7 or 8 out of 10. I'm pretty positive and just promotive there. For shiny ratings are very harsh. The average score is like a 2 or a 3 out of 10. It's very, very different. Uh, a times 5 horde shiny by default is like a 2 out of 10. And then certain more difficult ones will go up. So a times five horde shiny by default is like a flat two out of 10. Obviously increased stuff to it will get higher. Um, a times three horde shiny is kind of like a 2.5. Uh, a single encounter shiny is kind of like a four out of 10 by default. An egg shiny, a rare is only a six out of 10 by default, which is obviously like, still very, very, it's insanely difficult shiny, but you have to have enough room for like, I've probably only given like, five to six pokemon out of my like three to five shiny ratings i probably only give around five pokemon 10 out of 10s very very few pokemon give get 10 out of 10s a good example of one that got a 10 out of 10 was dusty owns the first shiny melodic guaranteed that was ever brought into the game um that's a 10 out of 10 that's a piece of history because that's insane um and it's like from 2012 or whatever um things like that are really crazy um i've seen people bring like secret shiny shedinjas are like 10 out of 10 um what else there, there are certain things that are 10 out of 10s that are just unbelievable porygon question mark yeah porygon's an age shiny so that's a 6 out of 10 base porygon from the celadon casino now that might be like a 9 out of 10 or like a higher you know higher grade um but yeah you'll, if you have, you'll have to just come and see if you want to see how it works and how I grade things, just come check out the shiny ratings. Should be on, I believe, March 28th, Thursday at 12 p.m. ET. Does this location need any special mons like damp? I bring like a damp and a ghost type to every location. This type, I think you do, I think you do need a damp Pokemon for Geodudes here. I think the Geodudes can pack self-destruct. So keep that in mind if you come shunt at the same location as me. 30 seconds left on my charm. No shiny again today so far. You hate to see it. 46,600 encounters here on the Sudowoodo. And there is the end of the shiny charm, fellas. And I think it's also going to be the end of today's stream. It's actually not that short of a stream. Three, three and a half hour stream is pretty solid. Thank you guys so much for watching. I super appreciate it. Hopefully it was entertaining or helpful. Like if it was, dislike if not, and subscribe for daily Pokemon videos. I upload every single day. And I stream four times a week, Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. ET. Discord's down below for updates on my content. And if you want to go above and beyond and support my content, like many of you did this stream, YouTube memberships, Twitch Primes, Twitch subs, and PayPal's Life Venmo donations do help out tremendously. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day and good luck on your shiny hunts. I hope you have a little bit better luck than me, uh, but we're going to keep going no matter what, okay? No matter how many encounters, fellas. I'll see you guys later. Peace, Arino. Yo, what's up? I just want to quickly say thank you so much for watching the entire video. That's very, very cool of you. And it's even cooler for all of these people to go above and beyond and support my content. I couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much again.